Welcome, 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 guys. All right, I'm excited. It is our first live trade room of the year. Happy 2008, man. I'm so glad to see everybody in the live chats. We've got a bunch of new people, a bunch of the old people, and uh, we're going to just kick this off in a major way. Markets are finally back to normal, and so we are ready to just get rocking and rolling. 2018 is going to be a great year for everybody. I got a real good feeling about it. So, Again, I am Ryan with ZenFX. If you guys are unfamiliar, if you're watching this on replay on YouTube, welcome, welcome. So tonight, this trade room is dedicated to surgical scalping, and we're going to go through our three-step process to uh, narrow the, the field down to hopefully a couple really good solid pairs. I know there have been some really good setups last week, which is a little bit premature, so we want to... Uh, Definitely take advantage of all the pairs that we can this week. Let me pull up our watch list. And as always, I recommend you guys having like a notepad next to you as well, or just pull up notepad in Windows. And uh, we want to write down all of the pairs that we uh, see in step one. And then when we move to step two, we'll kind of work through those, narrow the field down even further. And then step three, we'll take those last couple pairs that are just our best, most highest probability setups and look to see if we can actually place a trade or two on one or at least watch them for the next couple hours until we get a, a very solid confirmation candle. Okay. So as usual, you guys know, uh, Forex carries risk. Okay. So be very wary of that. These are strictly for educational purposes. Um, we've got something in the chat. Um, I don't know, Zengen, if you can't hear me, it's, it's going to be on your end because uh, everybody else seems to be fine. Um, so yeah, check your settings, see if maybe something is muted or um, if you need to call in with your phone, uh, you might want to try that. Okay, so as everybody knows, or if you don't know, then you're going to hear it right now. So we have three steps when it comes to surgical scalping process. Step one is triage. And in triage, just like it sounds, we're going to go through everybody. We're going to go through all 28 pairs, all of the major pairs and crosses, none of the exotics. And we're going to look for just structure. We're going to look and see who is getting ready who is ready to be operated on right now? You know, who needs our immediate attention? And that means we're just looking at market structure as far as the EMAs being in the correct order and price being above or below the, the 14 EMA and in a nice trending market uh, ready for a pullback. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So it's very simple. We can go through this very quickly. It takes me a little bit longer when I have to talk it out with you guys, but when you do it on your own, you should be able to run through this step in, in about five to 10 minutes max. I mean, you should just be able to blow through these pairs. Okay, we will hold off on the prep room. That's stage two. We don't wanna jump the gun. So let's see who's ready to rock and roll. So we'll start left to right, alphabetically, as usual. Um, and we'll start with Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. As we saw yesterday, um, or I mean, sorry, Friday, we had a huge move in the Canadian dollar. So it's not going to be outside the realm of possibility that the Canadian dollar pairs are going to be blown out. But we did see a lot of consolidation today. So as long as we didn't see a huge retrace in the pair, uh, we, like we did here, we saw pretty big retrace back downwards. So we saw that big push, push back up, retrace back down, and then about 50% move and consolidation. Right now, price is above the 14 EMA. It's already closed in between. So that one is absolutely uh, right out the right out. It is right out. Okay, we have Australian dollar, Canadian, uh, Swiss franc. Um, this one, we see a very consolidated market. A lot of sideways movement. The EMAs are pointed sideways. Technically, they're stacked in the right order. But as I, as I try to tell you guys, um, over and over again, and I'm going to keep repeating it until you get sick of hearing me say it, until it sinks in, that a surgical scalp is strictly a pullback in a trending market. That is it. Um, I've had some one-on-one -on -one sessions with some students lately, and I find the uh, race car analogy is the best analogy that I can give. So think of, uh, you know, let's say you're white trash and you love to watch NASCAR. <laughs> like, no offense to any NASCAR uh, 
uh, fans out there, but let's say you watch NASCAR and the, you know, your, your race car is going around the track at 300 miles an hour, you know, for quite an extended bit of time. That's a trending market. It's being pushed up and up and up for uh, over a day or two. And eventually, just like that car is going to run out of gas, the, the market is going to run out of gas. And that's what we're betting on. Okay. The market's going to lose its momentum and it's going to need to take a breather or a pause. Same as a, as a, a NASCAR is, car is going to need to pull over into the pit and get you know, new tires and, new, and gassed up and all that. But it's going to need to take a break. Same thing. When the market takes a breather or a pause, that's when we see price pull back. And that's when we get those confirmation candles that wick to the 14. When, when it does that, it's basically like us just jumping in the passenger seat in the pit. And as soon as the market takes off again, as soon as the car takes off, we're just there for the ride. That's it. And we're just like, we just want one lap around the track. Just, just one lap. But that one, that one little small movement gives us a, a, a nice amount of take profit because we scale in. We have our, you know, we have our method where we scale in our uh, entries, and that's the second part of the secret sauce of what makes surgical scalping so highly effective and what gives us such great risk to reward ratio. We're risking about 15 pips on a good day for 85 pips on a bad day, and so we can have multiple losses until we find that one nice trade that pays us out. Okay. All right. So moving on, we have a highly consolidated market. Uh, even if this did pull back to the 14, I wouldn't trade it. Um, Australian dollar yen. Now th this is like this, this is a beautiful trending market. Unfortunately today it pulled back way too much and we don't have much of an entry right now. We need to see these EMAs fan out more like they were here and spread apart. So, since this is an Asian pair, it's going to move a lot in this session, but I don't know if it's going to have enough um, volume or liquidity in the London or the New York pair or session to trade, even if it did. So I'm going to have to say that's going to be maybe a London session. Keep it, you know, keep an eye on it for London traders, but we won't have a chance in the Asian session. And that's what we're looking for is to trade something right now. Okay, we have price closed above. The 14 on Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, but we are seeing a lot of sellers in the market right now. We have a beautiful downtrend, but uh, it's just going to be a matter of, is it going to move enough and pull back enough to set up in this Asian session? Hard to say. Um, it just doesn't look like right now, but let's put it on the watch list because we can always come back and take a look at it in two hours and uh, see if it's something we can possibly take and just set and forget and let it play out over in London. Um, and if you, if you trade London, you can watch it. If you sleep during that time, you can just let it go and check it in the morning. Okay, that's one of the good things about these trades is that you don't have to actively manage them all the time. You, know, you can just let them go, but if you do have the ability to actively manage them, you can kind of minimize your losses if they uh, you know, if it turns against you, you can just close it out early, take a five pip loss instead of 15. Not a huge difference, but still, it, you know, every pip does make a difference. Australian dollar, US dollar. Okay, that's ugly. That's no. Um, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. Uh, we see the EMAs are nicely stacked, but because of the Canadian dollar move on Friday, same thing. We're going to kind of need to see it pull up a little bit. Right now, it's just in a lot of consolidation. So all this sideways movement doesn't bode well for a surgical scalp. Uh, same with Canadian dollar yen. Okay, we, we do have price above the 14, but it's just not showing us a, like a nice, true, strong trend. Uh, Swiss franc yen, uh, EMAs are in the wrong order. Uh, this is nice, here we go, okay. Uh, Euro Australian dollar, that's going right on the list. Okay, because we just just looking at it as a beautiful setup. We see a nice downtrend that's been happening since Friday, since this big push up, and as it came down, it retraced. I don't know, you know, just for just for grins. Uh, look at that! Right at the sixty-one point eight, it shot up to the seventy, which is uh, 
For anyone that is familiar with um, inner circle trader um, theory or methodology, this is what he would refer to as the sweet spot. That's a really nice tap. So this would have been a good sell yesterday if anybody sold that. And then, uh, yeah, so it's continued to drop. And if we see a pullback and a nice tap on the 14, yeah, we, we could be good for a sell. So we'll put that on the, uh, the watch list, definitely. Let's, um, speaking of which, makes me want to take a look at this, actually, just see what this la last retracement, 50%. 50 so uh, yeah, technically, I don't like to do extra types of um, technical analysis, but this is in a textbook ABCD pattern right now. So if we did a one-to-one -one movement, anybody that's familiar with um, with ABCD patterns, that looks like it could complete all the way down. That's like 26 pip drop from where we are right now. Actually, this right here, uh, 24 pip drop. So if we saw a pullback, that would be a second confluence to our overall strategy that it could go all the way down. That's almost exactly on top of our pivot point. So I like that. EA, not only have, if we can get a pullback to the 14, a nice wick touch, we have that ABC, that C to D leg um, that's also in line with our, uh, with our movement. So if you guys, it's this to this. If you guys are new to harmonics, so ABCD pattern, you got that 50% retracement, it's the lightning bolt pattern. It's the very first drive. And so we have our, um, our A, sorry if I'm getting totally off topic guys, but this is pretty, you know, it's like uh, what we used to call in the military hip pocket training that, uh, you know, if you got the chance, if something shows up, might as well, might as well. And then this is your B point, right? And then, by the way, I'm doing, <laughs> if you guys want to know how I'm doing this, uh, like a little pro tip MT4, if you highlight um, any shape or text or anything, and then you hold down the control button, like this is highlighted, you see the little dot, you hit hold down control and pull it away, and you get a clone of whatever it was that you had highlighted. Works really good like for this one-to-one -one movement if I want to clone a line. All right, so we have that. That's the A, B, C, D points. So this C to D leg is always a one-to-one -one movement of the A to B leg. It's 100% of A to B You, as far as that pattern completing. So that's a, yeah, that's, that's good confirmation right there that we might still have a good 25 pips left in that move. All right, moving on. Um, Euro Canadian dollar. So again, this is a Canadian dollar pair, but we do see a, a downtrend here. It's very slight though. Although it's 107 pips, so I guess slight is relative. Um, if we expand this out, yeah, that's not a bad movement. So if we get a pullback, our next pivot point, let's say it just, it, pulls back in this hour. Next pivot point is 35 pips away. So there's plenty of room for a full 30 pip movement. So we'll go ahead and put that down. Euro CAD. Okay. All right, now uh, Euro Swiss Franc. The EMAs just crossed on Friday and they just now, the 50 has finally just pulled through the 200. And this is starting to pin right now. So yeah, this is a good one to keep. Well, let me measure it out before I get all ahead of ourselves. Um, yeah, 30 pips down to the next, to the next uh, pivot level. Now remember, we use the pivot levels as our zones, just like they're, they're institutional support and resistance. So just like buying support and selling resistance, we're going from one level to another. So we don't go any farther down than this pivot level. That's just part of the, the methodology. So yeah, that's one to keep on the list. So Euro Swiss franc. So we wanna keep an eye on this um, in 40 minutes at the top of the hour. If this is not closed above the 14, maybe shown a little bit of um, sellers in the market, 
or even if it stays as a doji like this, that's good sign that this downward momentum is just taking a quick breath. I like this consolidation here that was in dead gap uh, today during New York's dead gap session, which is usually the last four hours of the session. Um, we could be seeing like after this, if this forms as a doji, we could see the next candle form as a bearish engulfing. And that would give us our evening star formation, which is our reversal pattern for candlestick patterns. And that would put us like probably 10 or 15 pips in profit almost immediately. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that in, in a perfect world, right? So we can, you know, a girl can always hope. Um, we're seeing the same exact thing, except uh, price is further away from the 14 with Euro Great British Pound. So this is going to need to pull back a little bit further. Does, does it have the room to drop? Um, just barely, depending on how far back price pulls. If it pulls back up another couple pips, you might be able to squeeze 25 pips out of this. And remember, we always put our take profit at least one or two pips above or below the pivot level because it doesn't always get tapped. So we just want to kind of have that little extra bit of security that it's going to actually activate our take profit. There's a one and a half pip spread on this right now. So remember, this ask line has to come down and hit your take profit, not price, the ask line, which is one point, you know, one and 1.4 pips of the, of the spread. So a lot of people get frustrated with that. They see price comes all the way down and just barely kisses your take profit, but it doesn't get activated. That's because the spread uh, prevented it. It's not the price that has to touch it. It's the ask line. Okay. So keep that in mind as you go through your trading career. Euro yen. This is um, as ugly as the girl that I took to prom in my junior year of high school. So we will just not even touch that. So, <laughs> all right. Um, sorry. Was that? That's just too personal. Okay, we have a beautiful downtrend here in Euro NZD. And this might have been a woulda, coulda, shoulda trade because I think it has already taken off without us. That's already 18 pips. Um, barring uh, an act of God that pushes this back up into a doji, then, um, I mean, it is another 40 pips down, but this is, I'm gonna classify this as a woulda, coulda, shoulda trade. And that's okay. Don't worry about those. Those will happen all of the time. You see yesterday, it had a beautiful setup. This is perfect, and actually on Friday as well, both perfect surgical scalps. You see a nice confirmation candle. We actually had three in a row, three in a row, never crossed that 15 pip take um, stop loss, and then it dropped 100 pips, easy, easy. This one, two beautiful confirmation candles in a row. This one might have hit your stop loss, but I would have jumped right back in after this candle, and then it would have dropped right back down, and you could have gotten some an easy 30 pip take profit. But this one, uh, I think it's taken off without us tonight, and that's no worries. We've got a couple of the really nice ones. Um, the 50 is too far away. We need that to pull through the 200, or the price could just come right back up. So this one's off the table. What is that? Euro USD. Oh, I'm. I'm really upset with Euro USD today. Okay, it it um, really kind of put a spanner in the works for our uh, EA today, the one that runs off of Euro USD, because it never does this. It never does just some, a straight. What was that? Ninety pip drop. That's it's ridiculous. It's it's bigger than its average daily range most of the time, and so. Yeah, EU is just a total bitch today, uh, and we we did take a loss on it, but hey, that's all right. We will get it back tomorrow. You know, you're going to take losses in the market. If you, I mean, if you can't take a loss, then you're in the wrong business. I mean, for real. We just try and we just minimize them, and we always make sure that our profits are greater than our losses. That's all. Uh, price is ugly here. This is ugly. Um, so G. Um, pound Australian dollars out. The cable Aussie just out. Um, pound Canadian dollar. The, see how price is in between the 14 and the 50? That's right out. That is right out. Um, nice. Okay, we got a nice trend here. Let's let's back that thing up a little bit. Um, 
yeah, nice, very volatile. You know, this is a choppy market. This is really, really choppy, but um, it is in a good upward trend. Look at that 50 pip range be between just a couple different candles. Um, it is in a nice range. Now, if we zoom in, even though we had this, what looks like a confirmation candle here, remember, we never trade the very first candle of the market opening because of the uh, traders are taking positions. Yeah, you're right, Mebs. USD was on crack. You know, I mean, if I, I would have been nice if I was the dealer, but yeah, that one was just, that, that thing was on like bath salts running out into the oncoming uh, traffic on the freeway. That's what it, that's what it was more like today. It was crazy. But, um, but yeah, uh, pound Swiss franc, we never take the, we, uh, we never take a candle on the opening session like this one that's right on the daybreaker. Um, that's just part of our rules. There's a lot of volatility in the opening uh, hour of the Asian market, opening two hours for me personally. I just avoid that. That's why we do this surgical scalp room on the start of this hour, because this is the first hour that I really think is a trustable candle uh, or you know a, sign a confirmation candle that you can really um, put faith in. This one is just a, yeah, we just look past that. So this isn't a woulda, coulda, shoulda trade yet. I think it could pull back to the 14, and if we see these fan out and start to push up a little bit more, um, uh, I take that back. Sorry, I should have measured it out. Saved us all the, the time and hassle to begin with. Okay, uh, GJ, the beast, um, pound yen. This one is in an interesting uptrend. We saw this pullback from yesterday. And let me put our daybreakers on. So we saw a, a good retrace yesterday. I apologize for all of the markings here. I was using this as a, uh, actually, you know what? Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Uh, now I apologize not. So we had a, a nice retrace from the trend that had been happening both Friday and yesterday. Uh, sorry, Thursday, Friday, and today. So, no, today's Tuesday. No, today's, yeah, today, Friday, and Thursday. Sorry, I'm getting my, my, my days mixed up. Um, so we had a good retrace, and I think this is ready to push back up. Uh, it's got about 25 pips to the next pivot. If we see it pull back and tap this 14, it's not – it's not the worst setup that I've ever seen. It's just GJ is very volatile, volatile, however you want to say it, uh, tomato, tomato. So do trade it with caution, but um, it could possibly form a nice, quick little 25 pip surgical scalp. Now let's, uh, I know it's not, definitely not 61 or 50, but let's see. Okay, right on that, yeah, it's right on the 38.2. So as you can see, these Fibonacci levels are not just there for no reason. These are, they're just like support and resistance. Price does react to these levels. So you see that 38.2 reacted exactly at that level, maybe a pip, had a little bit of a, of a wick, but for the most part on the hourly, we saw a good reaction there and then kept on going up. So if we get a little bit of a pullback like we have right here, same like same thing. If we get a little bit of that happen one more time, double tap to that 14, and uh, you could probably take it up for about 25 pips. All right. Uh, GN, my girl Sabs. This is her favorite pair. Uh, this is, yeah, that's not happening for us tonight, though. So GN is out. It's unfortunate because GN is one of my favorite setups to be able to trade because it just has these massive zones. Look at that. 50 pip, 52 pip zone. Um, and when GN moves, it moves big. So, I mean, look at this. this the candle alone just from this hour is, is enough to hit all uh, an entire surgical scalp. That is one, one candle surgical scalp. And that's why I like to trade it because a lot of times when I set a scalp, it gets hit in like one or two candles and 
I'm just done for the night. It's just beautiful. Um, sorry, uh, the cable, GU, a lot of sideways. This is a very choppy market. Um, we had a great trade go in today and then came right back down and hit our break even. And I believe in the signals chat, we're currently in um, a re-entry on that buy, which is a good play because you see the, the EMAs, they're all, you know, we're in an obvious uptrend. We did have that pullback, but uh, I think that it will probably continue on upward. The zone isn't big enough really for us to take a surgical scalp. I mean, maybe, but it's real tight. It's real tight and we see it's so slow. This is not gonna really give us any type of reaction until the London session anyways. So London traders, maybe take a look at that in your, in your session and see what it looks like at that time. Um, I just don't know if it's going to really do much, but uh, but really, but consolidate for us in the Asian session. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, but uh, you know, I thought I was wrong once, but I was actually mistaken. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is uh, not it. Not any good at all. Kiwi Canadian dollars right out, right out the gate, right out the door. Um, Kiwi, Swiss franc, this is nice. This is a nice uptrend. The problem is uh, we need to have a pullback. This candle alone is already about 13 pips, but we never got that tap to the 14. You know, we never got that like we really wanted to see. Um, you kind of had one the other, you know, last night. This is actually not, not the worst setup I've ever seen. You, you would have had this confirmation candle here. If you would have taken that, you could have, if you would have had a 15 pip stop loss, you would not have gotten stopped, but you might have exited manually because of this close just barely below the 14. It would have been a close call. But if you would have stayed in it, uh, 25 pip take profit. Would have, could have, should have. Much nicer trade the night prior. That's a beautiful confirmation candle right there. This is what we call a shoulder tap where the 14 just barely crosses, just nudges that outside shoulder of the candle. And um, yeah, if you would have jumped in that, oh yeah, you could have had a, depending on what the pivot levels looked like on that day, you could have had an easy 25, if not 30 pip surgical scalp. So you see how these set up over and over and over again, these pullbacks and then continuations. That's all this is, is a pullback and a continuation of a trend. And the 14 is just, by far the most reliable moving average um, on the H1 time frame for taking these uh, taking these trades, man. I'm telling you. So, the more you see these happen over and over again, the more confident you'll get in taking these entries. Okay. Um, so, sorry, were we going to do anything? No. We the New Zealand dollar, Swiss franc. We need to see it pull back again and give us like we saw two nights ago. Um, same with the yen, um, and we're getting a lot of selling pressure right now so this does not this does not look very appealing to me it's a very very tight range so that's that's out that's out um new zealand dollar u.s dollar same it's gonna have to go up and then come back down and it just doesn't have the range for it so that's out so no kiwi dollar um usd cad this one well, this is going to be a tough one because we did have this, this pullback um, and we're getting a pin right now. It's just going to depend on how this plays out. I, I think that we could see a continuation of this downtrend. I mean, look at that. We've been in a downtrend for quite a while and it doesn't seem like it's going to be slowing down anytime soon. So let's put that just on the watch list, UCAD. Let's check back in and see where this candle closes at the top of the hour in about 30 minutes. All right, um, USD Swiss franc. Our EA is currently in some cells on this one, um, but as far as a surgical scalp, it's stuck in between price. So um, that one is definitely not gonna be a cell or like, a, not a cell, it's, it's not gonna be a surgical scalp, that's for sure. And last but not least, Felicia. Um, Felicia is, is actually, um, I don't know. Felicia is actually coming out to play tonight. I don't know if it's going to be worth a surgical scalp. So we've seen, let's, uh, let's see where we are as far as, a uh, 
as far as a retracement. This might just be a retracement and I don't know if it's gonna, um, yeah, yeah. So this one's gonna be, this is a tough call because it is on the correct side of the EMAs and it is technically in, in, in the formation of an uptrend, but it's also hitting that 61.8 level, which means it could just be a retracement. Now, if it's just a retracement, you know, that means it's going to come drop back through these EMAs and you know, we don't want to have any part of that. So it does not look surgical scalpable. Uh, I would say pass on that. Just maybe check back in on it. Uh, we'll definitely check back in on it tomorrow morning when we, um, you know, when we do our live trade room for our full circle scalping. So uh, I don't know who uh, might be there, but uh, whoever is going to join me tomorrow morning for full circle, we'll check on it then. I'll see you guys then. What is that, Mebs? Uh, it looks like a bullish flag. Um, it does. It does kind of look like we have our flag pole, but it's hard to it's hard to say that that's going to be a chart pattern as far as this being a flag pole because it's a huge news event. So I mean, we do. I mean, I know we're not. It's not going to count as far as a surgical scalp, but we do see, you know, this, hello, MT4, wake up. You know, we do see this happening. That is true. Um, and if that were to be the case, then it would be a one-to-one -one movement, another 140 pip drop. I just don't see that happening, but it would be nice if we see this breakout um, of, this, uh, of the flag and then a continuation on downward. So... Yeah, that's a good possibility that would support our thesis of um, it being a good sell for a surgical scalp. Absolutely. So that does definitely um, back up our technical analysis for the scalp. And then let's see, who else do we – oh, yeah. Yeah, surgical scalping is just not going to be – not going to be a viable option as far as our crypto coins, but look at that. Look at that posted this um i posted this descending triangle symmetrical triangle wedge whatever you want to call it um the other night and look at that we had a couple of nice taps right to the outside after the breakout we had this breakout tap tap and then look at that litecoin just dropped them panties if you guys have been like taking part in the crypto um chat rooms man this thing those things are just addictive for trading i'm i've been trying to definitely jump in on as many as i can but so busy with with getting everything ready with the zen um services and stuff i've barely had the chance to, to do any of my own trading so it's nice to actually get back to the charts hey sabella i see you in the chats there's my girl what's going on um okay so we've done our triage, like I said, it takes me longer when I have to talk through it, but for you guys, you should be able to knock that out in five minutes after you get the hang of it. Then we move on to step two. Step two is our prep room. And in our prep room, just like it sounds, we're gonna take a look at these patients that we've um, designated as viable candidates for surgery and see which ones are actually ready to go under the knife. And to do that, we look at our um, we look at our currency strength meter and we see what currencies are currently most out of balance. So let's take a look at that. We're going to bring up our free currency strength meter. And again, I have this listed in the resources document, but this is a free currency strength meter. I have my, my paid one, but let's just use the uh, free one. I can't vouch for anything on this website. Again, I have to say that. That's my disclaimer every time. But this currency strength meter isn't half bad. It's a lot like my, the one that I use. So what we want to look for are currencies that are out of balance. And by out of balance, I mean I want, to pay, I want a currency that's very strong at the top paired with something that's very weak. And what's weak right now? Euro. Is it any... Um, coincidence that we have three euro pairs so we saw that those are trending markets and that's because the euro is so weak and we're waiting for that that pullback we want to see um you know we want to see that pullback and then we want to jump on that 
that Euro train. So this is telling us right now that the strongest currencies currently are New Zealand dollar, yen, and possibly Australian dollar. Actually, the US dollar, pound, Australian dollar, all very strong. Strongest being the yen and, well, the New Zealand dollar, actually. And then we have our weakest currencies. We have our cat, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, and euro. So of the, uh, of the pairs that we have, what is going to be the, the most highest probability setup? Well, already I'm looking at euro, Australian dollar, because we have euro down here, and we have Australian dollar on the rise, steady rising. This is an H4 currency meter, but we see that Australian dollar has been very active. So EA, we definitely get confirmation bias with that. So we have also the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. Now those are about neck and neck. New Zealand dollar is strong, but Australian dollar is about the same. So we're gonna see a lot of consolidation there. We might not see our take profit hit right away. Next we have Euro Canadian dollar, and those are both weak, but the Euro is very weak. So even though the Canadian dollar isn't like really, really strong, like for the, for, for Euro Australian dollar, I give that two stars actually, because um, we have very, very big imbalance. For Euro Canadian dollar, we have a slight imbalance. It's imbalanced, same for Euro Swiss franc. I think both those currencies are gonna be able to really kind of kick the shit out of the Euro uh, for a while. And so we definitely wanna get in on that action. Um, and then we have the, the beast. And the pound and the yen are both in the same category as well. So those are gonna see a lot of consolidation and then the US dollar, Canadian dollar, um, slightly, slightly strong against slightly weak. So again, the, we might see a good sell opportunity still come out of that, but it just might take a little bit longer. And of course it's a North American pair, like completely North American. So, we might not see anything happen between the Asian and the London sessions. I mean, we might, but we might be sitting on that pair for a good eight hours until we see it start to move in the opening of the New York London overlap tomorrow. Okay. So that's our prep room. So then we just go back and take a look at the ones that just looked the absolute best. And Euro Australian dollar was our, winner winner chicken dinner for the night but it looks like it might be taking off without us so what we want to do i so i have like just a i have a litany of just the most obscure indicators you've ever seen i'm like a lit, i'm a i am an indicator whore i will not lie i'm an indicator whore i have like this i've been hoarding indicators i don't care if they work or not uh, for some reason they're like pokemon to me i have to collect them all I have, I mean, I have this extensive library of just things that do not work. <laughs> so I don't know why I keep them. It's like a junkyard, a boneyard of indicators that are just dog shit, but I have to have them. Um, so EA looks like it might have taken off without us, but that doesn't mean that we still won't see it pull back. So we keep it on our watch list and um, we'll go back to it. Uh, question in the chat, um, Sabella. Do you have plans to set up a trade copier in the near future? Man, I swear to, if I had a dollar for every time someone keeps asking me about setting up a trade copier, I know, I know it's, and that's like the most popular question because the, not everyone can take all the signals and um, the EAs, as much as I love them, um, they can be unreliable at times. And I know everyone would love it if we set up a, a PAM account or just an, a manual, like a copier that just, as I take my surgical scalps, um, that you can copy them to your account. And the answer is yes, though. I have heard you guys loud and clear. And we, will, um, we are working on that. We're working on setting up a, a PAM account or a MAM account. It's just a lot of red tape. It's a lot of legal stuff to, to do it legitimately. You know, and I want it to be, you know how I do things. It has to be completely above board. We have to have all of our certifications in place. Um, you know, we have to be 
you know, get the green, the thumbs up from this, you know, CT, you know, what is it? The, the FTC, all that stuff. So um, yes, definitely in the future, keep an eye out for that. I want to try and have that up and running within the next couple months. And I will keep you guys informed as soon as we get um, everything in place. Absolutely. So um, it's going to be like a, a, a blend. I think we're going to try and have um, Chad have one available for like his crypto scalping. And I'm going to try and offer one for my surgical scalping and for my, uh, my full circle scalps for all my manual trades. And then we'll have one that's more of a swing trade for Adam um, to, uh, you know, just do lo longer term, like intra not intraday, but, you know, maybe trades that play out over a day or two that have a higher uh, pip value. And maybe we'll even have Marquise do one as well. Um, so, yeah. Definitely look for something in, in the works and uh, I'll keep you guys, keep you guys informed. All right. So EA, we have to, we'll keep it. We just have to hope that that pulls back, but that's definitely on the watch list. Um, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar was our other one. Um, was it? <laughs> Cause that one does not look like it would have been one. I think I might've written that down incorrectly because Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar is definitely not not one that we'll be watching anytime soon. So, um, oh, that's right. Cause it was way down here. It looks like the, uh, looks like the sellers have, or the buyers have pushed price way back up. Australia, that's not going to be one anytime soon. Uh, Euro Canadian dollar. I'm gonna have to go back and rewatch this video and figure out where I, where I wrote that down wrong. Um, Euro CAD, as we see, because of their, um, relative same currency strength right now. We're seeing a lot of consolidation, so keep an eye on that. Um, Euro Swiss franc. Okay, now this could be uh, a confirmation candle if in the next 15 minutes, sellers come in and push that candle back down to close below the 14, okay? So if that happens, this could be a very good confirmation entry. We've got definitely 30 pips to go, depending on how far that pushes down. So let's keep an eye on this over the next 15 minutes. Um, if it closes above the 14, it's not a trade. If it gets pushed down at the last minute and closes below the 14, then we could be seeing, like we talked about, that evening star formation happen after and just a, a nice drop. Okay, because... Um, this is gonna, it might consolidate a little because it's in the Asian session, but then it's gonna kick into high gear in the, you're in the London session. So let's keep an eye on that. Uh, GJ, Oop. beast from the east. Um, we're starting to see that pullback. So yeah, if we can, it's gonna probably take another candle or two. Maybe next, so I keep an eye on that. Set your clocks for an hour and 15 minutes from now. Go and check on that candle, see how it's forming up. Might just, uh, you know, might not form until London, but we'll see. So that's a wait, that's a, that's a maybe baby. And then finally, USD CAD. Yeah, I, yeah, I think if this candle um, keeps pushing down with bearish pressure, you can do one of two things. You can take the scalp right away and take the full 30, or you can do this. You can wait for the break, and this is just uh, this is our trading 101. Okay, guys, this is what this is this is what we do with almost all trades. Okay, we do break. If it retests this flag and then take it for a drop. So it's not a surgical scalp, but it could be a second entry. So I'll put it to you like that, that if we see this, this uh, candle close, like it is right now, enter for a surgical scalp. If it drops down, comes back and tests this flag, it could be a second entry uh, just to add into your positions. That's it. Just add into your positions. Could be one more extra position. And if this is a 30 pip scalp, that'd be like an extra 30 pips. So you'd be pulling not only your 85 pips from your 
staggered in orders from your pendings like we do because you'll have four pending orders waiting to be activated. Then you'll get another you know, 25 to 30 pips depending on where this closes on the retest. And so that could play out to be like a 115 pip trade. I mean, that, that's worth it, right? That's worth doing a little bit of technical analysis just once a night and waiting for that confirmation to, to hit. I, you know, that could be your entire equity goal for the entire week. If you're using small lots, I, I suggest like on a thousand dollar account, I would just be trading a mini lot for each pending order, a dollar a trade, and you hit one good trade and you've got a 10% equity gain for the whole week. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. All right. That's it for our analysis. If anybody has any questions, please type them in the chat now. I'll be happy to go over anything that you guys are a little bit fuzzy on. Um, again, if, if you're new to the surgical scalping method, you know, please go into the YouTube channel, watch my webinar on surgical scalping, the live trade number one video, and then the module one, which is advanced methods. A little, you know, goes a little bit deeper into the surgical scalping method. And then everything we did tonight will make total sense to you. You know, and this is just what you'll do once a night. Sit down, um, you know, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, go through all 28 pairs, just narrow the field down little, little by little, whittle them away until you got just one or two really beautiful setups, and then jump in those setups. And don't be afraid to jump in because you only have, you know, the stop loss is only 15 pips. I'll, I'll put down 15 pips any day of the week to possibly get 55 to 85 pips because our risk to reward ratio is just amazing. That's one of the best parts of this method. And so it's very low risk, very high return. Um, well, okay, again, on the, the question in the chat, for those of you on YouTube, I'm not talking to the um, to spirits in the sky. Um, the question is, when will we have the five minute scalping video? Probably, you know, I want to get it out by this weekend, to be honest with you. Um, which video has the advanced methods of surgical scalping? That is the module one. So module one is the advanced surgical scalping. Like it allowed me to go a little bit deeper into um, what it is and the theory and a lot of what I've covered tonight. And then, you know, module two and three is uh, all of our, you know, five and 15 minute full circle scalping methods. So. Um, but yeah, the five minute scalping method, the new one that will be coming out, I, I'm going to really push hard to have that done this weekend. Like I said, there's a lot going on with Zen and I couldn't be happier to have all this work on my plate. Like, believe me, I couldn't be happier to have all of this to have to get done. It's like a, it's, you know, it's a, um, it's a labor of love, believe me. But, um, yeah, I'm trying as hard as I can to get it out to you guys. I'm going to try and have it ready by this weekend, um, if not first thing next week, because uh, it's really fire. You guys are really going to love it. I've got some things in there that um, I have. I had my original method, and then I found things that I could actually put it together with. And instead of making them like three different methods, it's kind of like full circle scalping. I put them all together, and it just made the – win percentage go through the roof. I, sh I shit you not. The, the, uh, my win ratios for this five minute scalping method have just been phenomenal. I, I really couldn't be happier with them. I just wanted to make sure that I had everything dialed in before I gave it to you guys and then was like, oh, oh you know, by the way, I just figured out a week later, let, let's alter this a little bit. So definitely to cut down on the confusion. Um, can I show you, can you show me some more short scalping examples? Um, as far as what, do you mean like the, as far as like full circle scalping? Because we will have a live trade room for just that tomorrow morning in the New York session. Um, what we're doing right now is just strictly um, the, full, the full circle H1 scalping. But let me know what you mean. Um, if you can be more specific in the chat, Lindsay, um, yeah, I'll be happy. if. If it relates to what we're doing, I'll be happy to. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it's you'll love it. I'm telling you guys, you guys are gonna really gonna like it. I hope you like it. Like I said, I've been using it with great success. Um, I've actually, uh, yeah, I've, it was actually something that 
it was part mine and then somebody somebody a good friend of mine showed me something to to add to it that just made it even more lethal and then i watched some videos that um, uh, another trader that i um i think does really well with their trading had done and i just you know i put it all together and it was like bam I haven't tested it on crypto. There's a question in the chat. Have I, I haven't tested it on crypto, but I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't because our crypto trading is so pure price action and this scalping method, it's just it's pure price action. And the indicators, I do use two indicators uh, with this method that, um, and like I said, I don't, I, I have a million indicators that, and none of them work. This is like the only indicators that I've ever found that actually give good short-term scalping signals that don't repaint. And that was one of the biggest things that I would I just don't use any indicators because they all repaint. These ones give you like an actual future prediction and they're, um, yeah, they, they are highly accurate, highly accurate. So I would think that it could work on crypto very well and I want to get the system out and uh, you guys, you guys tell me, I'm going to try it out myself, but you guys will, uh, you know, you tell me because um, the crypto course, as I've, and you know, as I've mentioned, the crypto course will be free. You know, I'll give you guys the, the course for free um, because, uh, you know, you know how I do. And then um, the indicator, it does cost money. The indicator actually does cost money. And that's why I was like, I'll give you the course for free. That way, you know, take, don't, you don't have to pay me whatever money you would have paid me for the course. You can use it to go get the indicator because I think that it's just such a, a good investment. I don't think that you guys will be mad about that at all, at all. So once you see it in action, yeah, I think you guys will definitely, definitely love it. All right. I'm going to let you guys jump out. Uh, I will let you know how to get the indicator in the course. <laughs> I, you know, a, you know, a girl's got to have her secrets, right? Hmm. Um, I will, the indicator, uh, the indicator, I will, I, you know, you're going to you're going to make me spill the beans. Um, try, I, I will let you guys know how much the indicator costs when I give out the course, but suffice it to say the indicator it costs about as much as the course would cost and that's why i decided just to make the course for free because it was like it was one or the other i didn't want you guys to have to pay for the course and then pay for the indicator because i was i was tossing around the idea of doing the five minute scalping course for around two hundred dollars so that gives you a general idea um and i but then the the indicator ends up being you know you're gonna have to buy that as well i didn't want to have to you guys to feel like you're getting double charged. So, um, yeah. So instead I'll just say, you know, here's the, here's how I use the strategy. Take your money, go buy the indicator instead and, you know, live long and prosper. Okay. So anyways, like I said, I'll have more about that as soon as possible. I know you guys are chomping at the bit to get on that, that, uh, that method. All right. Last but not least, um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. What time are you on New York? Uh, yeah, it's going to be, it's right after, it's after the overlap. It's going to be um, uh, 7 a.m. No, 9 a.m. 8, 8. So I, I have to convert. I'm in Central Standard Time. I have to convert it for Eastern Standard Time. It's 8 a.m. Eastern. No, what is it? It's 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time because it's 8 a.m. my time because um, I have to have my, at least my own time to do my chart markups and my own trading. And then at 8 a.m. Uh, my time, 9 a.m. New York time, we, we start the trade room. And uh, by that time, it's the you know, session is in full swing and we can usually take a couple good live scalps that way. So um, I wouldn't know. I will not. I will not. Uh, nope. No previews. No nothing. You guys are just going to have to wait until Christmas to open your presents. I'm sorry. All right. That being said, I want, I told you guys I'd give you a, um, a announcement about the EA that's for sale and here it is. And I want to make sure to get this on the recording. And I did intentionally wait until the end so that people have to sit through the trade room. See, I'm sneaky like that. Um, so the EA is going to be priced at 299. Okay, so 
obviously three hundred dollars. So it's going to be three hundred dollars for the EA Mr. Robot, um, and that's a lifetime license. You can put it on up to five different accounts or five different computers. It's going to be sold through the MQL5 marketplace, so you can just buy it directly from there. That's what's taking so long is uh, me setting up a seller's account and uh, you know getting it on there so that we can use their licensing server and all that. And like I said, I like everything to be above board. Um, so that's going to be the price. The announcement is uh, that I'm going to run a promotional special. Uh, you know, you know how I love to. I love to hook you guys up. So because we're starting our signal channels this month, I wanted to run a promotion that if you guys want to jump in on the paid signal channels this month or next month, that I will give you one month of free uh, channel of your choice if you purchase the, uh, the EA. So basically I'll drop the price down to 250 for the EA and um, you know that'll cover your cost for the, the month. So let me, let me rephrase that so I'm not being confusing. So it'll be $300 and I'll give you like a $50 credit basically. I'll give you your choice. You can have both of the channels for free for the rest of January, right? Because they're $25 each. It's only a half month in January. So you can get both the Forex and the crypto channel all the way through the end of January uh, with the EA or you can have all of February with either the crypto or the Forex, one or the other, you don't get both, but basically you get $50 worth of um, premium service. And I just kind of let you pick and choose whatever, whichever way you want to take it. You know, you got three choices. You can get both of them for January or Forex for February or crypto for February, one of the three. So I think it's, I think that's, completely reasonable and completely fair. We wanted to do a very affordable price for the EA. Um, you know, it, like I said, it did stumble a little bit today and the markets were horrible in um, December towards the end. But Mr. Robot, even through all of that, has been our most profitable, most highest producing EA. Um, if you look at the um, statistics on it for November and December, even with a couple losses, it still closed in overall profit at the end of the month. So it had two back-to-back -back profitable months. We're running it this month. So, you know, we hope to have a profitable month with it this month as well. And if used with a proper risk management plan, I mean, the thing really can crank out pips when it gets on um, a couple good trends. So it only trades EU. You can use it to trade other pairs. I've just found that EU is the most profitable. You can trade it with any pair you like. It seems to work best on major pairs, and it seems to be the most profitable with EU through all of my back testing. And it works on the one minute time frame. So uh, it just takes those quick little 10 pip scalps uh, and just in and out of the market, just in and out, in and out. All right, guys, does anybody have any other questions before we wrap this up and call it a day? Okay, look at that. As we can see, we got our confirmation candle. So we have our entry. You know what, let me go ahead. I would be remiss if we didn't go ahead and jump in on this now. So let me show you, this is right above the pivot level. So that's perfect. We have 30 pips down to our next pivot level. Um, we didn't do our final step as far as looking left. I'm sorry, I was totally remiss about that. But usually our final step is we look left and see if there's any historical structure and we don't have any H4 or H1 um, points of reaction any time within the last uh, month. So we are good to go. So how we take a surgical scalp, obviously those of you that watch the video, and I'm sorry this video is going a little bit long, but Whenever we have the chance, I like to go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to take a mini lot. All of my, all of my orders are going to be mini lots. I'll take a market order sell. Okay. And let me, uh, all right. And so then we're going to place our pending orders. And let me, not my market watch. Let me open up my terminal. All right. Just in a little bit of, of drawdown on Swiss franc, but you know, what are you gonna do? So we open up our, 
our terminal and for this okay so we said we set our um, we set our take profit we came in right at 2415 so what I want to do is set that 15 pips up all right right about where the 50 is so 15 pips up point 24 if we add one more in for the spread like one and a half in it'd be 16 17 so uh, yes yeah, so we'll say 32 okay so 32 will be our our stop loss and then our take profit is just going to be 30 pips straight down so 1.2385 Okay, and so we see how we get our bracket. We're still uh, at least a couple pips above the next pivot level. So we've got that on our side, 15 pips up. Now we're gonna set our four pending orders. And yes, you do have to do this manually. I don't have like a script or a wizard or anything to do it yet, um, but uh, you know, give me a couple months, I'll get with a developer and we'll see what we can do about what we can do. Okay, so again, stop loss. Well, let me back it up. We're going to be placing a pending order and we're going to be doing a buy stop, uh, sorry, sell stop, okay, because we want that order to trigger as soon as it gets touched. So then 10 pips down is going to be our first level. So that's going to be 1.2405. And our stop loss, we measure, this is the only one that we also have to calculate out 15 pips. That's going to be 1.24. Uh, 20, two zero. And then our take profit is going to be the same 1.2, uh, four, sorry, two, three eighty five. Yes. Okay. So this first pending order is 15 pips up. Now, once our third pending order gets activated, we move both of these positions up to break even, to up to up to uh, our entry point. That's how we kind of control our risk management, or how we actively manage this trade. If you have that ability, so second order, again, and uh, this is just repetition at this point. Um, sorry, actually, uh, let me take a look. Okay, yeah. So we're just going to place three more orders, pending order. Sell stop, this one's gonna be at 15 pips. Stop loss is gonna be the same, or, or stop loss is gonna be at our entry, which is 1.224155. Just copy and paste that. Okay, take profit, gonna be the same, 1.2385. Um, stop's gonna, or the sell is gonna be at 1.23, uh, yep, yeah, three even. All right. Oh, do I have that wrong? Okay. Let's see here. Um, all right. One, oh, 1.2239. Yeah, that'd be way too far down. Okay. And then 1.23155. Yes. Okay. And oh, I skipped one. I skipped one. Let me read. No, let me redo that. Trying to do this all in my head. One point two four zero. So we have one at um, one point two four zero five, and we have one at one point two four zero zero. We have our stop in one point two three eight five. Yep, and our final one. Kind of did this out of order. My apologies to you guys. Pending order. Sell stop. That's the most important thing. Make sure you're putting that in correctly because uh, you can sometimes put in a buy stop for some reason. Um, two, three, let's see, we've got, yeah, 95. Yep. Oh. That's uh, perfect. Absolutely. All right. So these 
top three, these you know these last three pending orders, all our stop loss is at is at our entry level. Our set, you know, our first ten, pending order here, which is ten pips up, is at fifteen pips, and then our entry is also at fifteen pips. And once this third pending order gets activated, all these get brought up to our entry as well. So that if we have a worst case scenario, which is everything getting activated, it just missing the take profit and then it going against us and stopping us out of everything, that our risk management is locked in. It's already pre-calculated that even our worst case scenario is not as bad as our best case, which is take profit, everything getting hit, okay? And then again, also if this comes down and comes back up and retests this flag, we can add one more position, okay? So there we go, we have, our, uh, we have our trade set for the night. Again, it's a North American pair, so it might take a while for all of this to play out, but you know, we've got time. If I see a candle close above the 14 for any reason, I exit all my positions and just look for a different trade. It's very simple, very straightforward. You know, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And one of the one other thing that I like to do, I haven't, I didn't do it on this trade, but this very last pending order, I like to make that a little bit larger than all the rest of the pending orders. Like maybe, you know, three mini lots, all the way up to a half of a standard, depending on how confident I am in that trade. And then when it just does this last final little five pip move, we almost make double double the trade. It's a really nice little add-on once you get comfortable with the techniques to give you a little bit of extra cash. So, okay guys, that is it for tonight. Oh, I'm always glad when we can take a trade. You know, we did do the look left, even though it was a little bit after the fact, but I'm always glad when we can take a trade. So keep your eyes on the other trades that we have uh, that might play out a little bit later in the night. And uh, we'll keep an eye on UCAD, and we'll talk about that tomorrow morning in our trade room, see how that played out. All right, guys. Hey, thank you for joining me in the Surgical Scalping trade room. I appreciate everybody in the chats. Again, if you are watching this after the fact on YouTube and just catching it on a replay while well, you're new to our channel, please come join us at ZenFX, our Facebook group. We have a great group of uh, community of traders. I love to do nothing but just catch pips. We got a ton of free training. Give us a like and subscribe if you got anything great out of this video. I am Ryan with ZenFX. Big thanks and shout out to everybody. I love my whole Zen family that's in the chats. Have a good night. And as always, let's get those pips.